Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Hey, Tony, there's something that every solo entrepreneur needs to hear. If you're running your own show, you know how important branding and client management are. And speaking of making things easier for solopreneurs, let's talk about Schedulicity. It's designed to personalize your client interactions from start to finish. Schedulicity has some cool new features coming. You'll soon be able to customize your booking page, add your own logos, choose your colors, and really make it sing to your brand's personality. It's like giving your business a digital front door that looks and feels like you. Schedulicity isn't just about looking good. Schedulicity is designed to make everything smoother from booking to billing. You know, it's not just about the looks, it's about efficiency too. They've integrated something pretty slick, intake forms. Now clients can fill out all the details before they even step foot into the door. What's cool is these forms attach to the client's profile and update automatically for future appointments. Talk about saving time and starting on schedule. It's your schedule and your success all rolled into one. With all these tools from Schedulicity, you're not just running your business, you're growing it. And for all the solopreneurs and sweet owners out there, this is exactly the kind of support we need to stand out in a crowded market. Welcome to your day off. My name is Corey. Of course, I'm sitting with my best friend, Tony. What's up, buddy? What's going on, brother? Huge, huge shout outs and huge thank yous to First Pro- Premier Orlando. We are once again at Premier Orlando doing our live events um, that we do every first weekend of June. And also, uh, just from the bottom of my heart, thank you to Schedulicity. Once again, they are um, they are sponsoring the weekend. So, you know, yep. this our entire friends weekend. friends out in Bozeman. Our friends out in Bozeman, that's right. Um, so, you know, once again, thank you, Missy, and thank you, uh, Jerry, at Schedulicity for, for trusting us with with uh, with this sponsorship this weekend. Love you guys. Oh, that was it? Yeah. Oh, I thought it. you were going somewhere with nope. it. <laughs> love you. <laughs> we love you. Yeah, um yeah, once again, just thanks for thanks to Schedulicity and um, you know, if you've get if you get the opportunity um or you need a scheduling app or if it's time to change, you know, definitely give Schedulicity a look, you know, um those that support us support you. So, uh, you know, when you have an opportunity to spend your money, you know, just remember who's uh, who's there for you. Yeah, and and you're not going to have a better customer service than Schedulicity with the rock stars. Mm-hmm. We've said it a million times, and and we live by it. We we you know we use it yeah. every day a- in our business. So uh, we can truly truly say these guys are amazing. Yeah, and our clients love it most importantly. Mm-hmm. You know, so it, it's just easy. It, it's an easy app, and they're always 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 innovating. Um, they got some really cool special stuff coming up that we're not allowed to talk to talk about. This something about NDA or something, but you know, <laughs> just trust that there's some really cool stuff that's coming up w- with Schedulicity, and and that they uh, once again their funnel is always you know how how does this affect the hairdressers? Yep, cool. How can we make your life a lot easier? Uh, and it does, yep. right? Uh, cool. Let's get in. I feel like my, like my rhythm's off or something, right? Yeah, you are a little off. I'm this little, I know my rhythm's off. You know what? Well we just flew in, right? Yeah. So we we kind of rushed here to get up, but you know, you here said we you are. couldn't sleep on a plane, but you did. <laughs> so Katie, I, Katie I said I couldn't pictures. sleep last night either. Yeah. I know it's so crazy, so but. wild. So, anyways, listen. When when we get to do these live, uh, it's actually the, our favorite thing to do. We get to do live podcasts at, at the shows, and we um our goal every single time that we do this is, and this this, this is the conversation that we have all weekend is that we want to dig deeper with old friends, um, but we also want to make new connections and today's a little bit of a new connection although we've kind of met but you know it, 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 it's yeah, a we've different met but today we're going to become friends yeah that's right you know i thought we already were but you know whatever maybe maybe you're not friends but whatever <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Constantly kicking me into the curb. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to have, you, you might have to switch seats with him here. <laughs> you can be my best friend. Um, today on the par- podcast, we have Marlene RC, and she has started um, what I'm super interested in and, why, and what we're going to talk about a little bit today is the social art house. Um, I have all these projections of what it is, but <laughs> I don't want to talk about what it is because um, I, I kind of want her to walk us through it. But, um, but I kind of want to get into Marlene's story. But even though you said it correctly in English, you still jacked her name up. <laughs> Fair. That's fair. Marlene, can you say it the way uh, I- in oh Spanish? In Spanish, yes. it's Marlene Beatriz Arce. Oh. Uh, it's exactly <laughs> how I said it. What are you talking about? <laughs> Close. It sounds, it sounds better in Spanish. Yeah. It totally does. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, the way that it like roll with Marlene yeah. Arce, yeah, it just kind of rolls Only off. Only my mom s- 
sexy. That's how I know my mom's mad at me is when she says my name uh, in Spanish. The, the, whole, the, the, the whole thing. thing. The whole thing. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, are you just Marlene and then when you're in trouble, you're like Marlene? Marlene Beatriz Sarce. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I do the same with my daughter. I'm like, Isabella Sofia R.C. De La Vega. Uh, <laughs> Long trouble. names. Yeah, yeah you're know. a kitten. Yeah, they're in trouble. By the time you're done with the name, you're out of energy <laughs> to even be mad at them. Totally. They're, they're already out of time out. <laughs> <By the> time <laughs> you know you're in trouble in a Latin family when they say your name in Spanish. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, What's my, up, man? Uh, my brother, he, uh, he, his wife is from Ecuador, mm-hmm. and uh, they met when they were in high school. And, you know, he was learning Spanish. She's learning English. And now they, they both speak perfect English and Spanish, and he has her dialect. So when he goes b- to her country and visit her family, uh, every, all the locals think he's from there because he sounds like her. That's cool. Yeah, it's, it's pretty neat. That's pretty good. Then. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. So uh, they were saying when they used to go to uh, to um, the Galapagos, right? Cause, and uh, they would charge tourists a much different price than they charge uh, people who live there. And they... Uh, and they gave him the uh, the local price because they they think he's from there. You that's know, cool. Galapagos is definitely on the bucket list. That's uh, cool. Same, same. <laughs> I want to do that bucket list too. <laughs> Speaking of places, where are you from? So I was born in L.A., but my parents are both from El Salvador. So yeah. I have another cousin from El Salvador. <laughs> really? <laughs> wow. So you know pupusas. Oh my gosh! Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, th- the community that we live in near DC is 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 heavy uh, uh, El, Sa- El Salvadorian. Yeah. Um, you know, so we have w- we have the pupusa trucks. You know, yep. if there's a construction site, there's a pupusa truck. You know, love pupusas, and my mom makes the best pupusas. Oh I'm God. not gonna lie. Actually, you know what? Like, I love <laughs> is uh, the Salteñas. Where are they from? But Salteñas are not Salvadorian. No, 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 they're not Salvadorian. It, 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 what it, is it? Where's Gloria and them from? Uh, it, it's it's like this, like, it's almost like a, like a, like a empanada, but it's like, a, it has like a, a soup in it. It's like this hot soup with this like sweet bread, but it kind of look it's rolled up like a big empanada. No, I don't but it's know. So that sounds <gasps> good though. Yeah. <laughs> especially so right now. Good. I know, especially right now, right? Totally. Yeah. Yep. And listen, if you're listening in and you can, you, we're <laughs> saltaneous. I'm, I'm just brain farting what country they're from, but, but you know, let us know. Hit us up. Everyone's gonna be like, you idiot. I'm from <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you were, b- so you're born in LA. I was born in LA. Born and raised in LA. Lived there for thirty years. Uh huh. And then I started traveling and moving around. So, yeah. How'd you find the industry? So, do you guys know George Alderetti? Yeah, sure. Okay. So, I was a client of George Alderetti's in the salon. And I started doing hair shows for him. And um, they needed a receptionist. So, I started working as a receptionist there. Became his and his partner's roommate. And then one day, his roommate told me, like, what are you doing with your life? You're just going to be a receptionist all your life. And I said, you know what? I think I want to do hair. So at 25, I went to beauty school, and I started doing hair. And that's how I got into the (laughs) industry. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. But it's been an amazing journey. And I have two sisters who are also hairdressers, so... Did you talk them into it, or were they No, I didn't. didn't. They just found it on their own. Oh, they were working for George, too? Vanessa was working for George, <laughs> too. <laughs> Vanessa worked for George, too, yeah. They own a salon out in L.A. But I think my mom probably would have been a hairdresser if she wouldn't have had six kids, you know? Well, that's a wow. lot of names. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> she has, if they're all in, she doesn't have time to be a hairdresser. When she's she calling up the names all the in time. Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's trying to control six kids is full. Boy. It's a full time job. Oh, I, ca- I can't imagine. I th- I'm watching my daughter trying to control three. She has a three and a half, a two, and a six month old, and I'm tired just watching her. I'm yeah. like, I can't imagine six. Yeah, my mom was smart though. She signed us up for every type of lesson under the sun. I mean, we did it all. We tap jazz, piano, guitar, yeah. baton. Like <laughs> everything, she just kept us busy to how keep she us out of trouble. Yeah, but how did she get everybody to, to all the places? She was just a constant. We used to drive around in a motorhome, all of us. No, yeah, like, like a, a little, f- r- like a little Chinook, like the smaller motorhomes, and yeah. she just throw all the kids in there and then take us from like lesson to lesson to lesson. Yeah, it was crazy. So you drop the oldest one off first, boom, boom, boom. They no, come back, did, pick them up. We did a lot of things together. Like we all danced uh, flamenco dancing and Spanish dancing together. So we spent all Saturdays at dance lessons at the same studio all day long. It was crazy. So you're dancing tonight? 
Oh, uh, I love dancing. <laughs> oh, you're dancing tonight? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I love dancing. I put music on. I'm I'm the first one on the dance floor. We need to get you and Lisa together. Oh, I love Lisa. Yeah. Lisa, well. I won't dance around Lisa. She puts me to shame. <laughs> she puts everyone to shame. <laughs> I totally. I've Wait, got a video. I'll show you a video later, but I've got a video of her and Keon dancing together. And, like, Keon thinks he's doing something, but he ain't doing nothing. No. Well, yeah. when Lisa's on the dance floor, that's all you want to watch is Lisa. Fair. <laughs> yeah, like it goes from just, like, everybody having fun dancing until all of a sudden now it's a, it's a Broadway show. <laughs> exactly. <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> like a dancing circle. Woo, woo. Well, you know what I found in the industry as I've started to work with so many hairdressers is a lot of them have theater backgrounds or dance dancing backgrounds too so they're natural performers i yeah. think yeah. I get, well, or, or misfits what, 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 <laughs> whichever <laughs> or both <laughs> yeah. definitely both yeah that's great so so how did you find like like corporate hair oh yeah so i was working at the salon with george and um he had set up uh interviews for two of his colorists to interview with retkin for to be an uh, artist a retkin artist mm -hmm. educator and they flaked at the last minute and i was his assistant so he sent me on this interview and i was like i'm an assistant i don't know and i got the job as a educator whoa, 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 hold on okay <laughs> we're going we're going way too fast right now <laughs> so what did what did um like when you were in the interview like what were they asking you, or what did you have to do, or what did you ha how did you have to perform? She was just asking me color theory questions, and because George is an amazing color educator, I knew all of it. They asked a ton of questions about Shades EQ, which I, ha I mean, I knew all the Shades EQ formulas from George. Yeah, and then I just got the job. And I don't know if you guys remember her, but Cynthia Pitchford, she used to work for Redken a long time ago. She's actually the one that hired me, and actually, she played a big part of <coughs> getting me to go really corporate because at the time Redken wasn't owned by L'Oreal, mm -hmm. but L'Oreal uh, acquired Redken and then they wanted to launch Redken in an, in Spain. Um, and so they needed someone who spoke Spanish and they're like, she speaks Spanglish. That's <laughs> good. <enough."> <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and so now that I think about it, I think it's, it blows my mind that they would send like a, I was just like a younger educator that like, sure, go to Spain and launch this brand that didn't exist. So I, off I went to Spain because I was like, oh, I'm a Spanish <laughs> dancer. I, it's my <laughs> destiny. <laughs> <laughs> and I went to a school, Catholic school with all Spanish nuns. So oh. I was like, this is meant to be, right? So I went to Spain, um, launched Redken there, and that's how I went full-time corporate. That's great. Yeah, so when George, when, when those guys <laughs> flaked and George asked, Hey, hey, Marlene, I need. We need you to go there because to say I'm sure to save face for himself, exactly. right? Exactly. <laughs> did Did you just think I'm just going to go through the motion? Did, did you guys talk about? It? He's like, just go through the motion. You might not get. You probably won't get it, but just go through the motion so it saves me. Exactly. And 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 I then this is it. Just like launched this whole amazing career for me. But were you scared? Were you? For, are you just like you just went in there knowing that it's not going to work out? I'm very much kind of go with the flow at all times for the most part. So it's just like, okay, if it works, great. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And so I just went in there with that kind of open mind. Same thing, like I went to Spain. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what do they say? Um, something about being naive. Like you don't know what you're getting into. Uh, ignorance is bliss, yes. right? Yes. So yes. ignorance yes. is bliss. You go, you're like, okay, sure. And then you get there, you're like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing here. I listen to a lot of podcasts with actors, and they talk <laughs> about like the acting process. And and uh, quite a few of them have said that they um, they started getting roles when they stopped caring, mm. you know, and that's kind of what it sounds like. Like, oh well, you know, whatever, you know, because I guess you don't look so desperate and so like, you know, um, that you that that you need this, you know, yeah, trying to force it. Yeah. It's true. I when I think back about through my whole career, I feel like I've never been like that's what I want to go do and I'm gonna go get that until I be created Social Art House. Mm -hmm. But up to then. It was kind of like everything just kind of fell in my lap. And I was like, do you want to do this? And I was like, sure, I'll try it. And I would just try it. I guess it's kind of like not being afraid of taking risks and not being afraid of failing. Right. Most importantly. Yeah. Right? Like so yeah. how long were you in Spain? So I was in Spain for two years. And then. Um, oh, whoa. I, in my head, I was totally thinking like you did a class there. No, I was there for two years. Whoa. <laughs> I she literally. She launched the the, 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 uh, the uh was it Shady yeah. Q or no, Redken? I launched a brand, mm. Redken. Wow. So we went there. Le Redken did not exist in Spain. So I got there. There was not one piece of paper that had Redken on it. And as a matter of fact, when I went to the interview, they sh they sent me over there to do the interview. 
And I walked into the office and I was like, hey, I'm here to do an interview for Redken for the education role. And the assistant's looking at me and she's like, uh, who are you supposed to interview with? And she told me, I told her the name that they had given me. And they're like, okay, well, she's out on, um, what is it called? She's out on um, leave. No, she's oh, out on leave you? for depression. And I'm like, huh, <laughs> okay. So <laughs> Can't wait for her to be my boss. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay. So she's like, just wait here. They went and t- checked in with HR. So they ended up having like all these uh, other people interview me. Because they're like, what do we do with her? She flew all the way over here. We don't know what to do with her. So they interviewed me. I went back. And then they finally hired a new GM to launch Redkin in Spain. And so he flew out to New York. And I met him in New York. And he actually gave me the book, The Alchemist. Do you guys yeah, know yeah, that, love book? that book? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And One he's like, I age. hope you take the job. And here's the book. Read it. And, of course, I read the book. I was like, you know, I wanted to go anyway. So it was an amazing, amazing uh, experience. Also, the hardest thing I ever did. Because how do you go from being a hairdresser behind a chair, right, uh, teaching classes in a salon, you know, part-time to like, okay, now I've got to well hire a team, train a team, tell them all that Redkin's about. They wanted to make sure that it was done with the American culture because they were very French because L'Oreal was very French. And so they were super resistant to, like, doing all the American things, like, laughing and oh the right. dancing <laughs> and <laughs> all the activities and the games. So it was definitely uh, interesting trying to inoculate all of them with that type of culture, but it happened. And yeah, it was, was that, that, how did it go over? So that was the educators that were like resistant to like the clapping and the dancing and stuff. Every, I mean, everybody, I mean, there was a few times where I told my boss, um, I'm like, well, if you wanted me to just do it, the French way, why would you hire an American to come do this? Yeah. So you stood up for it. You're like, no, this way we're going to do it. Yeah, I did. Whoa. Yeah, I'm pretty surprised. <laughs> 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 I, <look back> <laughs> uh, I don't think I knew how the position I was really in um, and who I was talking to. I was lucky enough that my boss was my age. And so there wasn't this like weird thing where I was like this young, naive. Right. You were both young and naive. (laughs) (laughs) He was really great, though, too. I have to say, I've had some really great bosses and mentors along the way. So, yeah, it was was awesome. And I got to meet some of the most amazing Spanish hairdressers because I also had to build the Redken artistic team. And Mm -hmm. so we would go visit um, some of the best salons. And at the time, they were trying to um, get Sebastian out of those salons, right? Uh They were competing against Sebastian. So we would go to the top Sebastian salons in the whole country um meet some of those artists and then i would say like oh do you want to become a redken artist and then we i created this amazing redken artistic team there that was super fun too i'm still friends with them today oh that's awesome i can imagine especially as a young hairdresser getting to put in this situation i mean that's a lot of responsibility for a young hairdresser but when you look back how exciting right i mean how it was exciting and i like i said i don't think i knew Looking back now, I'm like, whoa, that's pretty major. But uh, during the time, I think it's like a sink or swim situation. Yeah. You're just, yeah. you know, I got like, I think I went, do you guys familiar with Landmark Education at all? Mm-mm. So Landmark Education is like a self-development um, course that they do. They have them all over the country. They're a little, they could be a little weird and a little culty if you're depending like. Depending on who's doing it. Well, and depending on how susceptible you are, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but they really do teach you really great things, like um, uh, things like um, making sure that you're a person of your word. Like they're super big on integrity. So I was like, okay, well, I gave my word that I was going to be here for two years, so I have to make it work, right? So I think that really made me stick to it and not quit when there were so many moments I was in another country with no family or friends, mm. not knowing the language, because, I mean, I knew Spanglish, <laughs> and they, <laughs> they, don't, they don't speak Spanish. They speak Castellano, which is a <laughs> whole nother thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, it was hard. <laughs> it was did, hard. <laughs> did your mom miss you? No, everybody in my family was super excited because everybody got to come and visit. Oh, so <laughs> uh, well, that was going to be my next question. That's cool. Yeah. So they all came over to see you. Yeah, they all came over to see me. Most of them did, yeah. That's it was super so fun. Cool. Friends came over to see me. It was super, it was, I think. Why weren't we friends back then, Marlene? I don't know. <laughs> it was definitely one of the most pivotal moments of my life at that age, I think. Um, it really shaped who I am today. Did, did, uh, did Sam make it over there? 
Sam did make it over there, and Hugo. So oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I haven't so seen Hugo forever, by the way. So Hugo. I haven't seen him since pre-COVID, actually. So Hugo, I love Hugo, too. He's also very funny. Um, but Hugo worked at the same salon as that George had. George, uh, it was George Alderetti, uh, Hugo, I worked there, Nico. Do you guys know Nico Abriel? I know the name. He used to do he, Halle Berry's hair. He does a lot of uh, celebrities' hair out in L.A. Also, Victor Valverde. Yeah, we know Victor. You know Victor. We know Victor. Yeah. Victor worked there. Uh, Justin Isaac worked there. We all worked at the same salon. It was super wow. fun. Yeah. That's a tough Dude, I got to tell you, I, mi <laughs> I miss Justin on the road so much. There's no one that's more fun. I don't know He's about funny, no one. Yeah. Justin is so much fun. Yeah. I miss him at the shows, too. He's fun. We worked in the salon together for a while, oh, too. I can imagine. So yeah. was, did George get upset that you left the shop? No way. No, because no, then I brought George <laughs> and Hugo. Oh, it wasn't Sam. It was George and Hugo who I brought over to do a show with our Spanish artists. We did this huge oh. show, the L'Oreal, all the L'Oreal brands did, and they, it was crazy. I mean, it was like the kind of, they built this skyscraper like backdrop, and it had like a second floor, and they brought in like an aerobic instructor. They were like trying to make it feel all super American. It was <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and hilariously bad because it kind of sounds hilariously bad. No, but it was. It was catchy. I mean, it was disruptive. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was disruptive. The reason why I said that, because we did a podcast with Vivian McKinder and Trevor Sorby, and, and Trevor is the reason why Vivian, Vivian came over here to, to America. And uh, he's always like, you know, he was proud that he, you know, that he presented that opportunity for her, but he at the same time, it sucked because, you know, he missed her. You know mm. what I mean? So, uh, No, I don't think anyone was upset. I think everybody was really excited for me. To be honest with you. It's after the two years when you came back, did you go back to the shop? or No. So when I came back, um, I became a – I stayed with Retkin in a corporate role, and I became the director of training for the Midwest. And so I lived in Chicago, and I did that for about three and a half years. And then I moved to New York. They moved me to New York, and then I did the, the Retkin International role there. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got pregnant. <laughs> that <laughs> <got> happens. <laughs> And so then I moved back to L.A. Um, to be near my family for two years. And then I came back to New York and worked in, like, education development and events. I kind of did every single job you could probably have mm -hmm. within the education department at sure. a brand. Um, and then I moved over to Matrix, and then I took the head of global education for Matrix, and I did that for about three years. Mm -hmm. what year, what, when were you at Matrix? You want years? No, <laughs> no, 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 Fifteen years ago, ten years ago, whatever. No, no, not that long ago. Let me see. I went to L'Oreal in 2015, so I was at Matrix probably 2011 through 15 or 2012 through 15. I don't know, somewhere around there. And Benson was there then, right? Yeah, Benson was there. So on the artistic team, the global artistic team, we had um, Daniel Rodan, mm -hmm. um, Amon Carver, mm -hmm. Christopher Benson, um, on the U Dan Chichai on the U.S. side. And then on the I got to work with a lot of Brits. They had a lot of Brits on that the global team at the time. So people like Errol Douglas, Jamie Stevens, Hooker and Young, like some of the big names in the U.K. It was super fun, too. That's cool. Yeah. Th that's pretty amazing, too, to, to start out as a young hairdresser, but... I mean, you've just been surrounded by just amazing hairdressers your whole career. I know. <laughs> it's <laughs> really crazy. Yeah. I really have. I feel so blessed but and it's lucky. all by accident. It's all all <laughs> by <laughs> accident. <laughs> you know, it's not Literally. Like, yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's, you know, obviously it things were, the universe was yeah. divinely yeah. pushing me Absolutely. in that direction. Yeah. Uh, but well, she's always meant she was meant to be. Yeah. I mean, she was, uh, she's obviously a performer. Right, because she's not a performer. You're out in a year in in That's Spain. That's true. If you're not a, you know, if you're not a performer, you know, they're not like, hey, when you come back to the U.S., l come over to to L'Oreal or Major or whoever. You know, like you're you're clearly a performer. Well, I think, I think one thing that I am good at being a double Libra and all <laughs> is uh, relationships. That's yeah, right. No, serious. Like I think the the key thing here is everybody wants. The you know, the same thing. Everybody wants to succeed. Everybody wants to win. And so if you create a situation or environment where you can create a win-win for as many people as possible, then people usually like to work with you. Mm, I love that. You know? So <coughs> there's enough for everybody, I always feel. 
I love that. I think that's a great transition. So tell us about Social Art House, <laughs> okay, okay. right? <laughs> yeah, so bef- after Matrix, I left and I went to L'Oreal Professional. Uh, and I was uh, working as a uh, head of L'Oreal Professional um, in the U.S. for about five years. But in the last two years, I was like, okay, I've been at L'Oreal 20 years. I've worked across most of the brands. I've done every job. What do I want to do? And it was at that time that the influencer uh, phenomenon started happening and the brand started bringing in influencers to work with. And when we were at L'Oreal, we were working with Johnny Ramirez and on Cotran, mm-hmm. right? And so they, when we were working with them, I noticed that there was really great opportunity for the brands to try to figure out how to best leverage the relationships with the influencers. And the influencers are great because they're such great branders and marketers, mm-hmm. right? And but not always they were the best educators, right? Because they didn't have the type of training that most educators or artistic teams have working with the brands. Right. And then on the other side, the artists were amazing educators, right? And can totally sell you anything that you want. But maybe they were so used to being behind a brand, they didn't really know how to market themselves. And so I saw that there was a big opportunity to cross-train them when we started to integrate the influencers and the artists, because I'm sure I'm not the first one that said this, but obviously there was a little bit of friction when that started happening, right? Because obviously the artists that had been there for years and dedicated all of their life and time to the brands were starting to see the influencers come into the brands and kind of taking away some of their the time. Light. Their light, yeah. Yeah, their light. And so we worked really hard to try to make sure that we were integrating and cross-training um, everybody so that everybody learned what the other had to offer. Again, the win-win for everybody. Sure, right. Um, and then uh, they also had asked me if I could help them. This is before influencers really started doing independent education. They're like, we don't know how to put it together. Can mm-hmm. you help us? And so that's kind of where the light bulb went off. And I was like, hmm, this is an interesting opportunity to help people um, put together their educational programs. Um, how do you put them together, how do you sell them, how do you market them, all that kind of stuff. And so that's kind of where the light bulb went off a couple of years before I left for a social art house. Wow. And then, I mean, I, I know that anybody that's involved with you that we talk to s- says nothing but, you know, absolute just great things about you guys. Oh. So, you know, and that's obviously what drew us to you too, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Just like, who <laughs> are these people? Why are they? Why yeah, are they exactly. talking We're about like the us? underground? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, we work on the DL kind of. We yeah. do. I think. Um, well, because for us too, it's everyone that's been a part of um, Social Art House. We're really passionate about people development, mm-hmm. right? And so, when you're passionate about people development, it's really about putting others first. Just you're really. It's kind of like a service role, right? You're like, how can we help these people? be the best that they can possibly be. And so you're always kind of in the limelight in the back, which is probably why this is my first podcast, <laughs> right? <laughs> I, right? I've never been, and I've never been one, again, to be like, oh, I want to be in an interview in this magazine or the other, which mm-hmm. is all great, right? right? So here I am, Social Art House, trying to ch- tell people like, oh, you need to learn how to remark yourself. So clearly we need to do the same for ourselves. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of uh, like like walk me kind of through cuz I'm a little confused about like huh. so I know like our good friend um Mr. Jay Ladner um I know that he's working with w- yeah. with you. So like what are you doing in with the everybody. Wrong w- so I'll yeah, tell yeah. you what we do. So originally we started off as just a talent management agency, right? And so when I decided to leave L'Oreal <coughs> Johnny Ramirez was like, if you leave, I'll be your first client. So for me, Johnny will always have a special place in my heart because he gave me Show me the money. The balls to leave, right? All so right. he kind of was my launching pad into doing it. And so he was my first client. And I really helped to just navigate the conversations with the brands on contract negotiation. Right. So this is what they want, this is what works, this is what doesn't work. That A lot of the times, a lot of the influencers always wanted to be more integrated into the brand versus just being there like for a pay and play, mm-hmm. I guess you could say. And it was just always hard for the brands to figure out how to properly integrate people into the brands. Like I think there's still an opportunity for a lot of that. So Johnny was my first client and then the pandemic hit and then Lisa came up to me and was like, I need to take my offline business online, 
right? Because we have to do everything digitally. So we help Lisa get go from offline to online and go all digital, help us build out our website. So we really work as brand developers for each one of the influencers. We sit down with each one of them. We sit down with them and say, okay, what is it that you want to achieve? What are your goals? And then based on what their goals are, we put together a type of strategy and a plan for them to achieve that. And everybody is so different. And everybody also comes to us at a different level. So it's, we try to meet them where they're at and try to put together a plan that makes sense for them. So are you, are you finding them deals? Are they finding deals? I, I, is it, is it, it could both ways. So a lot of the times we have, because we have a lot of relationships, you know, from all Double Libra the stuff. from the years, <laughs> right? <laughs> from the years, we will because we also work with brands. So we have the management side, and we also do consulting for beauty brands on the other side. And so it's a brand matchmaking type of thing. So the brand will come to us. make me a match. The brand will come to us and say, "This is what we're looking for. This is what we're trying to promote. This is what we're launching." And we'll say, "Okay, let us go find someone for you." And so we'll go try to find someone that matches you know, their culture, because it's really important to make sure that they match. Mm -hmm. Right. And there's been times where it hasn't been a match, and okay, you know, Such you move life, on, right? It, just, it happens. Um, and then, um, and sometimes some of them say, I've got too much going on. Here's all the people that are reaching out to me. Can you do the follow-up and make the connections? And just the brands will come to you. The brands that. will come to them. Oh, got it. Like, they, a got lot it, of people, got it, got they it. get DMs, right, from a lot of brands. Right. Like, can you filter through all this? Can you see what's real, what's not real? Can you see, like, do they have money? Do they not have money? Like, sure. you know, are they a match for me? Who are the players? And so we do a lot of that upfront work just to make sure that it's a match for for the artist or for the influencer. Um, so that's how we kind of help them. So we're kind of managers, really. Yeah. We're, they're managers and brand developers, I guess, would be the other thing. So if, if, if I'm like an influencer and I have like a, whatever, if I'm an influencer and I'm coming into your, so am I signing like a two-year contract with you? or No, we make you sign a contract, you know, uh, where, and we're, we're pretty flexible. Mm -hmm. um, we don't want to take away relationships or money from things that you've already established on your own, right? Like that's not, we're not thirsty for that, I guess. Right. We're like, if we bring you something, right this is the tree this is the um this is the contract and this is what we take or this is how we approach it mm -hmm. and so <coughs> if we do all then even if they bring it to us if, but we're negotiating and doing all that front upfront heavy work for them mm -hmm. then we do g take our agency fee does of that course. make sense? Yeah. I, mean, you're yeah, don't work. Yeah. I don't work for free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a little bit like a pay for play, right? I mean, on yeah. your end, on your end, it's like, well, you know, if we're, we're going to put the resource in this, then there has to be. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we're a business <laughs> after all, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, but if some of them, you know, will do their own thing and I'm like, okay, if you want to do that on your own, then, you know, but then, you know, if, of course, if they have questions about that, we will also answer any questions that they may have. Some people have come to us and just say, hey, I want to negotiate this on my own. I just want to do a consultative call with you to see, like, what I should sense. or shouldn't mm -hmm. do. We've had a few of those. So I think we just try to help. Mm -hmm. And I feel like at the end of the day, the people that really find our service or value in our services, they stay. Right? And so we have a lot of people that have stayed. Yeah. And we work with a lot of the best Hairdressers in the industry. Yeah, you sure do. Yeah, so we're blown. We were blown away in Chicago. I mean, like you guys put on a, a great show. Oh, thanks. That was amazing. Thanks. Yeah, we were really. That's the other thing too. I want to make sure that we're. I'm like okay. I spoke to the artists. I'm like, because you guys are some of the top artists in the industry, you guys should be driving the industry forward, right? And so AI is on us, right? Mm -hmm. And so. There's this weird fear mongering that's happening around AI. I'm like, let's lean into it and see how we can use it to really push the industry forward versus being afraid of it, right? Because yeah. it's coming. It's yeah. not going I mean away. Being afraid <laughs> of it is, it, it, there's no value in being afraid of it. You know, I mean, I, I think like everything else, um, I've talked about this on the podcast before, but I, whether it's, we'll go with social media, like 80% of social media is amazing. 20% mm -hmm. is terrifying. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and I kind of have the same feeling about AI. Like, 80% of it is amazing. 
and twenty percent of it is going to be terrifying. Heck yeah, you know, it's just what do we lean into and, and how do and, and, and how do we use it? But to ignore it is isn't an option. Exactly, and I feel like sometimes our industry has a tendency to ignore things and still like it's forced onto them. I'm like, no, let's lead this charge instead, and see where we can go with it. And show people what's possible. Like that whole opening video was all done with AI, right? So I found an artist in Italy. And Whitney actually helped me with this. Oh, I was gonna <coughs> say, I was like, Whitney was said that she found that artist. She I found. Say it. She found <laughs> him. <laughs> yeah, she found him, and she turned me on to him. And so, of course, then I started my best stocking skills to get him to answer me because we had a week before the show. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Wow. It was a week before the show, and so I finally he finally answered me, and I was like, we've got a show in a week. Well, well hold on. <laughs> what was your plan B? We were already looking at other AI artists, and I had already interviewed or had them do some samples for me, but it was not working out. So I don't know. There's always... Things always come together. Yeah, they always <laughs> do. <Yeah. laughs> Double, <laughs> Double Libra. <laughs> Double Libra. Double Libra. No, no, So, um, what's that? My stocking skills are really good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you did get here a little early today, so yeah, we saw <laughs> we saw that. Yeah, so um, he finally answered me, and he was super excited to do it. And I'm like, I'm like, I know it's only a week. I know you're not going to be able to create anything o just d original for us, but if I go through the stuff that you've already created or like put something together, could you do that in a week? And he said, Yes, that I could do in a week. He's like, But I created those in vertical, and you needed in horizontal, so I need to recreate everything anyway. Right. So it might mm. not look exactly like what you picked out. I'm like, that's fine. I don't care. So we did the he did all of that with Mid Journey and um, Runway AI. Um, he was a photographer for Milan and then he oh calls wow. himself a promptographer now. Right. Oh uh, which nice. I love how he's yeah. navigated this whole AI thing and like changed his mindset to be like, OK, I can switch now. I'm going to become a promptographer to make sure I get the content that I need. Um, and then we also did the voiceover with um, AI with Human Lab. So oh, that's cool. Human yeah, Lab's cool. Yeah. So we wanted to show, like, these are all the things that you can create in a week, right, with AI. So I'm not sure if that message really got out there, but it was really yeah. cool to create cool. it anyway. Yeah, that, cool. <laughs> that, was, that was crazy. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we have to talk about the envelope before we can push it. Exactly. Yep. You know, exactly. So, um, it, it was just to talk about the envelope, but more to come. Yeah. Right? And the artists were all into it and they're like, oh, yeah, that's cool. And then when we showed them the video, they were like completely blown away. So it was fun. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of hard work in a week, but it was great. Sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Cool. How, how was all the feedback? I mean, the feedback's been great. I am. Um, I think, you know, some people, there's always, you know, there's always work. there's yeah. always some things and there was um, um I grew up in performing so of course from like a stage mom perspective I was like oh, I could we could have done this better we could have done that better because that's just stage momness I guess nobody else knows yeah. right we know right yeah. Yeah. but it's always good to be self reflective and see what you can do better right oh, 100%. <laughs> so um but yeah it was it was super great a lot of the feedback was like wow that was so disruptive again and different than mm -hmm. anything that's been shown at the show so it was fun it was fun it was cool when you were taking a chance and a risk oh and the voiceover, we also, apart from the voiceover, because I put in all my thoughts into ChatGPT, and it created, I said, create me a script that's about this m long. And so, yeah, we wanted to see what we could create using all the different Can AI I tell you tools. how we used it last year? How? We were supposed to do, Tony and I were d supposed to, we did, we did a panel in Chicago last year, and, um, and Tony and I were the host of the panel. I heard about this, actually. So we had, um, we had six barbers that were on the panel with us, and we were like, and we had to fill an hour, and we're like, oh, my gosh, what you know, the old way we would, we'd sit and bang our heads about, like, what are we going to ask them? What question are we going to do? So what I did is I fed all six bios into it, and I said, hey, Mr. Chat GPT, Tony and Corey are doing a panel, just the, the most honest panel, the, the, the longest conversation with AI. You know, we're, we're doing this panel. It needs to be an hour long. We have these six guests. I'm going to upload their bios. Give me questions. And, dude, in three seconds, it was yeah. like, it was an hour filled with questions. And the questions were, brilliant you know mm -hmm. like and then and then we would filter through it and we would go um we go oh well that doesn't sound like us or that's like you know and then totally but but, but it got us 90 percent there and it, it i don't think we added anything actually what we did <laughs> is we took all the questions and we shared them with the panelists and then we're like is there anything that you want to talk about add the question and then and then and we, we had like organized it and no, it it's was great. so I amazing i love chat gpt i do too yeah. have you played with the new one um, I have the four, one? but no, I haven't. The 4 -0? No, mm -hmm. I have it. I just, 
we were ready to, getting ready for this. So I haven't had a chance. Yeah. But no, no, no. I love it. I think it's such a great tool. It's really great too when you're trying to answer. Like you know, you get like this really weird testy email that you have to respond to, but oh, you yes. don't. But you don't want to be a jerk. Yeah. You're yeah. like, please write me this in this type of way. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. And those are great because I'm like, awesome. oh, wow, they said that so perfectly <laughs> and polite and eloquently, <laughs> but still to the point. Yeah. It's yeah. great for that. Yeah, it's <laughs> awesome. I, I, what, what, how I've been using chat that's been like like the big secret keeper to me is to ask it to ask you questions. Mm. So, um, hey, chat, I need to write a I give it a job first off, you know, mm-hmm. act as a PR agent and write me mm-hmm. a bio. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'll say, ask me the questions. I did mess up and say, ask me five questions. And I was like, probably not enough. So I don't give it a number anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, I go like, ask me questions about how, about my bio. And then it just, and then at that point it just becomes like, it's just matter of fact stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, you, what's your name? Nah, that's easy. You know, and then it's that kind of stuff, you know, what, what's the event about? Or I've done a couple um, uh, press releases that way too, mm-hmm. which, is, which, is, which is pretty cool. And like, it's just not something that I have the capability of doing anyway. So I'm like, oh, this is so cool. I can actually do this. And like, we would have never released a press release without Chat GPT. You know what I mean? Just because it's just not, it takes so much time and effort to do it. And Chat just makes it so easy. And we do have really great copywriters on the team, too. So we, you know. Well, I mean, they'll be there for a couple years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just one part of them. So, because I also work. So we had, um, when we first launched Social Art House, I had, it was myself. And then Justine Berger came mm-hmm, on sure. and was working with us. And Courtney mm-hmm. um, was also working with us for a while. Um, and then we had brought in Mar- Maria. But both, um, Justine knew Courtney from her hair brain when she worked at Hairbrain, yeah, sure. and then I knew Justina Maria from working at L'Oreal. So we have three ex L'Oreal lights, I call it, yeah. working there. Um, and so it's great because they're also a great copywriters, great education developers, great. They're great, everything. I love them. They're the best. That's so cool. They're so if you if you are, I, I kind of want to go back to like uh, the so user so. experience with it. So, well, I mean, just like. I mean, you said influencer. Do you have to be an influencer? What qualifies as an influencer? If and then, like, if if I'm a couple year and I have, you know, whatever many followers, ca- can you kind of help people get launched in that, or kind of like walk me through, like? Yeah. So right now, because we're a s- obviously a small team and we sure. have a lot of people <laughs> ready, we're kind of at um, capacity. So we're kind of more selective. Now we're o- we've always been selective, but I'm just saying, like, we have to be really selective about the people we take on. Um, so it's, we are, you know, everybody that's with us has about 20,000 followers or more. Um, um, and like I said, they're all at a different place. It's really about, they already have their own brand and they mm-hmm. re- maybe they need like a brand refresh or they want to redo their brand. So it's people who are already doing things in the industry, but really need support or guidance or help with strategy, branding, um, refocusing, mm-hmm. um, that's kind of the pool we play in right now. You know, I'm at that place now, too, where I have to figure out, okay, do I want to scale? If I want to scale, what does that look like? like? Right. So I'm in that yeah. precipice, I guess you <laughs> would yeah. say. I'm like, okay, do I want to take the jump? You know, because been, I've been bootstrapping this whole thing from the beginning. Sure. So now it's like, okay, do I bootstrap, continue to bootstrap, <laughs> or do I, you know, go in and get – in investors or all this kind of stuff so i've been watching a lot of shark tank <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> trying to figure out what to do <laughs> you know one of my friends was on shark tank oh which i love shark tank which uh, oliver zach he started a tattoo uh balm cream oh wow and he got signed by by uh cuban and then did he talk about it on the podcast anyways cuban? yeah about the extra money so anyways mark uh-huh. stole more money at him that's cool. And now he just he just landed uh, about three or four months ago. He just landed at Walmart too. So that's like amazing. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and see, that's what's different, right? Because those are all products, and so we but we offer services, and so it's a little bit different when you're mm-hmm. trying to offer a service. Um, it really does take people, and so also finding the right people that fit in. I really proud of the team that we have. Even our artists, like, was so great at ABS. It was the first time any of them were all working together or meeting each other. That's and cool. And it was That's so what's cool about these events. Great yeah. in the model room. Everyone was getting along. Everybody was helping each other. It was there was no egos. It was awesome. And I'm really proud of the people that we work with. They're just really great, talented people who really want to do things in the industry, make an impact. So 
And that's no, so important. I mean, it's so important, especially if you're going to put a model room together. You're going to put like an event thing together. It's so important. So you, so I mean, we've talked a lot about L'Oreal here, and like your legacy is L'Oreal. Have you found that um, you're able to reach other brands outside of L'Oreal? Oh yeah. As you've been I mean, once you get out of the L'Oreal bubble, I call it. Right? Yeah, <laughs> then yeah. I was like, in oh, it, so wow. I get it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because it's a bubble. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of resistance to leave that bubble, too. There is. There yeah. is. And then even when you're inside, we call, there's a, you know, we call it's it the, the golden handcuffs, oh right? Yeah. They're yeah. like, oh, I don't want to leave the golden handcuffs. But yeah. then when you leave, you're like, oh, wow. And I think my biggest learn from leaving L'Oreal, I think even for artists when they leave brands or they're trying to do their own thing, is finding their self-worth or their worth outside of that thing that they've ha hung their hat on, right? And yeah. so when I left L'Oreal, I think the biggest exercise I went through was, okay, if I'm not this person that's with L'Oreal, then who am I? And what value do I bring? Or what's my purpose? And I that that's a really good exercise to go <laughs> through. Um, and it's, it, it's, you realize it's like actually the brands need the people to make the brands be the brands that they are. Yep. And so gotta that's work. what we got to, you know, again, it could be a win-win for everybody, but I think the biggest work is teaching our stylists and our artists and our influencers that everything that they bring is so valuable to the table and so not to devalue themselves and make sure that they're, you know, getting their worth. Yeah. And that's that's the difference from today and pre uh, social media is that pre social media uh, the artists didn't have an outlet, so they they only had to, they could only go through the brand. Mm -hmm. Now they have a voice outside of a brand, mm -hmm. and so uh, they can work together exactly. and, and and help build each other up. Uh, and it's not just one heavy side, you know, one sided. Exactly. So it's that's the biggest I think the biggest thing for me. But yeah, I know I, I it's funny, but we do do a lot of things. So <laughs> we. We do the management, mm -hmm. we do the consulting, so we work with some really great brands doing um, consulting on their end, whether it's like video editing, a lot of, you know, we work for some of the brands doing their video edits. We work for some brands putting together their education strategies or putting together the influencers or education teams that they need. So we work on both sides. Um, and then we also, last year, at the end of last year, we did this really weird it wasn't weird it was an awesome project for samsung where they wanted to do oh, that was a skateboard thing right yeah so they they were doing pop-ups so they wanted to do four pop five pop-ups across the country two in la two in new york and then one in vegas for formula one and they did two that were k culture themed right mm -hmm. two that were uh, skating graffiti themed and they needed influencers so they needed art graffiti artists and skateboarder influencers and they also needed like k-culture influ influencers so k-beauty uh k-food uh uh k-pop mm -hmm. and so that was a little bit outside of our normal thing but it was an amazing project to work on and it was super fun that's to be able to work with other content creators outside of the industry oh that's cool so you know going outside of the and still we integrated a lot of our people like we got Jack was on it. Min Kim was on it. Um, we all, Matthew, um, do you guys know Matthew Collins? He's I with the so. Dyson team, and he's also, but he's, he's on a podcast with um, Zach Shepard about Formula One. So we knew him from our L'Oreal professional days, and so I hit oh, on. That's cool. I'm like, hey, Matthew, do you think we can get Dax to do this pop-up for Formula One, and you guys could do, like, a simulated podcast um, that you guys do? So that was super fun. Like for for celebrity uh, outside of yeah, hair sure. contracting, so that was super fun. I learned a lot, and then hopefully we're doing more Not this year. Yeah, Yay. they they just reached yeah. that. So, but yep, but going outside of the bubble, working with the other brands, working with other things outside of beauty, we've helped a lot of. Um, we work with with a lot of our artists work outside the L'Oreal brands. So there's like Jay Ladner. Right, 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 um, right. Lisa loves balayage, right? Lisa Walker. There's um, Ammons with Living Proof. Um, I don't know if Lisa was with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're working on some rebranding for her. Yeah. So yeah, she's awesome. I love her. Yeah, we've had her on the pod. Yeah, she's awesome. She's yeah. she's she's. I mean, she's just full of genius ideas, all the time. She's just like. Shh, shh, shh. That's so cool. yeah, she's awesome to work with too. Um, who else is outside? Sana's not. 
and she's with um, KMS. Mm-hmm. So we do work with a lot of brands outside of L'Oreal Bubble, and that's really been a lot of fun. We've worked with other brands too. You know, I don't want to say them all because yeah, 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 <laughs> I get it. I don't know if they want us to yeah. know that we're working <laughs> with them, but, <laughs> but yeah, no. But it's been fun to get outside of it and see that there's talent and opportunities at so all the brands. So if there if there's somebody like an influencer or something that wanted to get in touch with you, like how d- how do they do that or, or or what's that procedure? All right, so they would um, just reach out to us. You, a lot of them just reach out to us on the Social Art House Instagram. Mm-hmm. Or if you go on the website, there's a contact page. So they can go on the contact page, fill it out, and then we get back to them. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's really cool. Like, I think that I, this, uh, but I think I understood that Social Art House was, you know, representing the artist, you know, and, and I think it's really cool because I think, uh, like, every every kind of art, whenever you work with a brand, you need some kind of representation there. And, you know, I think for so many years, um, certainly in 2014 through 2018 or whatever, um, during the influencer explosion, um, that there wasn't that representation there. And, and, and I'm, I'm really proud and happy to kind of see that you guys are, d- are doing that and kind of just representing us, you know, because at the end of the day, I mean, what this podcast is about and what we're about is <laughs> hairdresser to hairdresser conversation, you know, and, and, and I'm just really, really happy to see that that we have representation. It's not just about the, and I'm not hating on brands. That's not what I'm doing. No, me but neither. <laughs> but, but, you know, it not not necessarily being taken advantage of, but but best to to navigate their careers. Exactly, and I think that um, what also helps is we're hairdressers, too. At that the end of the day, helps. we're hairdressers, and yep. so, and educators. We were all educators as well, and so... I think that's what makes us unique. We're an agency, but we're also hairdressers. So that that's like a little feather in our cap, I like to say. No, no, it, defi- well, it definitely is. Cause you know that they get you. They understand you. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, you know what I mean? They're, they're well, more they're importantly, they get you, right? That's or what I'm saying. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and there's a lot of other agencies, right? There's a lot of the editorial agencies, like the Wall Group and all that, but th- their job is different. They're yeah. booking editorial stylists with brands to do yeah. other things. We are pro-beauty. I really like to say we're... I think that's another distinction is we're pro beauty focused. We really work with all the professional brands and the professional hairdressers to kind of create those symbiotic relationships between the two. That makes sense because our friend Lynn, he's a he's an editorial artist and that and he's been working with an agent for pretty much his whole career. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, but he's never at these hair shows, right? So it's like it's it's different. It's different, and and he says that he goes the hairdressing that I do is different than the hairdresser that, that that you do. Not yeah. taking a shot necessarily. Maybe mm. he was. I don't know. But <laughs> 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 but nonetheless, yeah, it is different, it, and 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 it, it's cool to kind of see like not necessarily that that's merging, but that there's representation for for you know the pro the the pro hairdresser, you know, yeah. those that work behind the chair and those that you know are are in the space. Well, we're that's big awesome. fans of you guys. Oh, yeah, uh, thanks, sure. and yeah. we're big fans of this industry and you guys too. So I think. Again, it's a win-win for everybody. It's a win-win. No, I look at you double lever and No, no, <laughs> and I, I, I appreciate you guys, like, inviting me to be on because you're right. We have kind of just been on the DL, and uh-huh. it's we've really just grown through um, recommendations. Like, people have just come to us through recommendations, and we haven't really been out there talking about who Social Art House is, but I think... We should you know be proud of what we do. And no, you should definitely, definitely be proud of what you're it. doing. <laughs> and, and I think the right way to build it, because if you're looking for the right people, then you need the right people and not just every people. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So, you know, I, I think that, that I think that that's a, a, a good way to scale, not scale. Exactly. You so, know? yeah, I mean, if the right person comes to us, then, of course, we'll look at it. But at the same time, like, if you're just trying to grow your social media, it's, uh, that's, you know, there's uh, lots of great resources out there. So many amazing coaches out there in the industry, um, that they can go to. And we're happy to refer them to that when they come to us. We're like, Hey, have you thought about so-and-so, you know, we try to drive them in the right direction, but you know, for us, it's really about helping, you know, the people who are doing it in the Mm -hmm. industry do it even better. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. I like that. Do it even better. That might be the title of the podcast. Yeah. Do it <laughs> even <laughs> better. That's awesome. Marlene, uh, one last time, if people want to get in touch with you, if they want to get in touch with Social Art House, uh, get, uh, show them the way. Yeah, so they can contact us through a DM on uh, at Social Art House on Instagram, or they can also reach out to us on socialarthouse.com where we have a contact page. That's awesome. Awesome. 
Marlene, Marlene RC, thank you so very <laughs> much. For thank you, guys. Horrible. You sound horrible. Sound, it sound horrible? Yeah. No, that was right. Marlene RC, thank you. Thank yeah. you, guys. I really say it appreciate it. Say like your mom would say it. Marlene Beatriz Arce. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Marlene better. RC, thank you so much. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thank no, you thank you, guys. <laughs> and have fun at the show. <laughs> thank you, you very much for joining us on your day off. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends. Give us a rating and drop a review. To listen to all the latest podcasts, please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet. And to stay connected on and off the show, you can follow us at Hair Distry on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Peace and love.